Yeah, I'll take one. Thanks, uh, Acting President. Um, I wish to speak on motion number 552, standing in my name. And uh, this motion goes on to say that this House notes that uh, the one, the Legislative Council functions on behalf of all Victorians and therefore all proceedings should be subject to public scrutiny. Two, a recent Australian election survey conducted by the Australian National University of more than 2,100 Australians found just 25% of respondents believed people in government could be trusted. Three, fair media coverage of parliamentary proceedings is a critical part of democracy. Four, visual and audio recording and still photography are permitted in the Legislative Council Chamber by accredited media organisations and individuals only. Five, removing certain restrictions on photography in the Australian Senate has ensured a greater sense of transparency in the Federal Parliament. Six, extending the permissions for photography in the Legislative Council Chamber is just one of the many measures which may restore some faith in the political process and requires the Procedure Committee to inquire into, consider and report by no later than the 25th of November 2021 on changes to the rules and regulations relating to photography in the Legislative Council Chamber to ensure greater transparency. Acting President, this motion is about transparency. It's about modernisation, but it's fundamentally about allowing the public to be more connected to the democratic process. This motion seeks to extend the permissions for photography in the Legislative Council Chamber to beyond the media. As we are, photography is allowed in this place, but by accredited persons only. And why is that? Why isn't it allowed by the general public? I've been asked the same question by many people, including many school kids visiting this place when they could, and I've never been able to answer or give them um, any reasonable reply. Sometimes I reply that I don't know, and it's just what the rule is. No one's ever been able to explain to me why this is the case, but in all honesty, I don't believe that the status quo is satisfactory. Why is public photography banned in the public gallery? If the answer is you don't want to get photographed picking your nose, well then don't pick your nose. <laughs> If you don't want to get photographed falling asleep, don't fall asleep. If that's the main reasons for not allowing photography, then, then that's pretty thin. <laughs> Is it tradition? If so, it's not unusual for traditions in this place to be superseded. As I peruse the photographs of previous presidents outside the halls just around the corner, I noticed that it, it wasn't that long ago that the presidents wore a full bottom wig and this has since been dispensed with. And I suppose, thankfully so, for some of the presidents in the modern era, although acting president, I wouldn't mind seeing you in a full bottom wig right now. Might, might be some improvement. But that is what the essence of this motion is. The modern era. It is just one of the many measures, <laughs> it is just one of the many measures which may restore some faith in the political process. Imagine the great photos family and friends could have taken when Miss, Miss Watt did her maiden speech recently in this place. Imagine the photos from the public gallery um, could take when important laws are passed in this place, for, the, for instance, dying with dignity as an example. When Mr Jennings made his farewell speech, I sat just over there and I saw his family and friends sitting in the public gallery. And I thought, how good would it be for them just to take some photos for their own memories of Mr Jennings in his, in his final speech to Parliament? Imagine being a school kid and being able to take photos for your political representative in action, becoming more engaged in the democratic process, rather than just sitting up there soaking in the atmosphere. It's about the public, and in particular, it's about our children, becoming more connected with the political process. We need to regularly look at ways to modernise the parliament. And at the end of the day, this motion is a referral to the Procedure Committee. And unlike other committees currently operating in this place and the other place, the Procedure Committee uh, does not have a lot in its books as we speak, but they do do a fantastic job. I know Mr Limbrick had concerns about uh, people's privacies when sitting at the public gallery, and these arguments and issues would be fleshed out in such a referral. George Bernard Shaw famously stated, and I quote, there are those that look at things the way they are and ask why. I dream of things that never were and ask why not, unquote. This place could set a precedent and be the very first parliament to allow photography by the public from the public gallery. I urge members to support this motion in the interests of transparency, democracy and promoting community engagement. And I commend this motion to the House.